In today's video, I'm gonna share the 10 books that most changed my life thus far, especially in relation to things like understanding my feminine power, getting in touch with my body, hacking my mindset, and just living a more fulfilling life. Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk about things like feminine energy, self-improvement, and wellness for women. So if that's something you're into, you should probably hit that red subscribe button below and join the community. So this has been my most popular video request by far, like by a mile, and I'm finally getting around to it. The reason why it took me so long was because I recently discovered a few books that I really wanted to read. And so I'm glad that I waited because I actually ended up adding a few of those to the list. All of these books will be linked down below in the description box so you can find them there. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. All right, let's get started. So the first book is usually sitting right up there on my bookshelf and a few of you have actually commented saying that you purchased it because you've seen it up there in every single video and that you guys like it. And so that makes me happy. But the first book is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And I have read this like a bajillion times and you can see it is like literally falling apart. I read this probably at least like twice a year just to kind of like refresh myself. But it is a very good basic beginner book, really easy to read, all about how you can transform your life and how your thoughts create your reality. It will probably change your outlook on life. And there's a quote on the back and I feel like it's just so perfect for this book. An excellent book for restructuring one's life and finding self-esteem and self-love. Basically in this book, she talks about how the thoughts that we think, not only about ourselves, especially about ourselves, but also about the world around us affect our reality. And a lot of this comes back to self-love and self-worth and how if we start to really love ourselves and value ourselves, our world begins to change. And so the title is very spot on with this book. She talks about how no matter the circumstances, you can change your life, you can heal your life, you can transform your life by the way that you think. And so this book kind of talks all about that. And she has a bunch of different exercises in here and affirmations. She's very, very big on affirmations and what you can do to kind of change your thinking. Another big part of this book is that she talks about how our thoughts can create physical symptoms or disease in the body. And I'm a big believer in that. I mean, I've seen this with myself, but she's also a very big believer in that. There's no denying that our thoughts and our mental patterns can also also create physical symptoms in the body. And so she has kind of talks about that a lot in the second half of this book. It's really interesting. She has this list in the back of the book about basically, you know, if you're having a problem with your skin, what kind of thought patterns are you having and what affirmations you can say to kind of start reversing those thought patterns. And one thing that she says is that we're basically creating every aspect of our life, positive and negative. And some people do take that a bit harshly, but it also puts you in the driver's seat. It gives you a lot of control if you can start thinking about your life that way. And she helps you dive into that and release the needs that you have for creating stress and problems in your life. This is a very, very popular book for a reason. And I recommend this to pretty much everyone, especially if you're struggling with things like issues with self-love and self-worth, dealing with chronic illness, or you just want to really restructure your life. Now, the next book is Women Who Run With The Wolves. and. I I love this book for like ancient womanly wisdom and guidance. And I saw a review for this book. It said something like, if in, if a wise grandmother was a book, it would be this. And I found that review so accurate. I will say it is a little bit wordy and is sometimes a little bit difficult to read, but overall it is such an interesting read and I really recommend it. Basically this book is myths and stories of the wild woman archetype. So basically she talks about different old myths and stories and breaks it down for you and how there's so much symbolism in these stories and how they all really relate and can come back to what it means to be a woman. It definitely is unlike any book I've read before, but I have found it so interesting. And she talks about all the different aspects of being a woman. So she talks about your intuition, creativity, love, abuse. She kind of goes through it all. And I just think that her approach to life is so spot on and it really is ancient grandmother wisdom. Now, the last book, I picked that up and I read that basically in a day, but this book was much different. This is a book that I tend to read. I will read like a chapter, like a story and her breakdown of it, and then I'll take a break from it. And then I'll pick it back up and I'll read another chapter, another story, and then take another break. So this is something that has taken me a while to read, but every single chapter I just find so fascinating. Again, it is a little bit wordy and the first 50 pages or so for me were really boring and I kind of had to power through them. But once I got to the 
meat of the story, then I really started loving it. But I don't know, this book just makes me feel really good and really wise while reading it, and I recommend it to every single woman. Okay, I'm really excited to share this next book with you. This is one that I just recently read. I'm really glad I did. This is not a book for women. It's actually for men or for a masculine person. This is the masculine in relationships or in relationship. And wow, <laughs> everyone should read this book, men and women alike. It is such an interesting read. First of all, I think it's such a good idea for women to read books like this to kind of see things from their partner's perspective. But in this book, he basically talks about what it means to be a masculine partner in a relationship and what that looks like. And he basically breaks that down into three different pillars. So one is respond versus react, two is provide structure, and three is create safety. And he basically breaks all three of these down throughout the book. And if you are a feminine woman reading this book, then as you read through this, you will just be like, yes, I feel so validated. All of this feels so true to me because he really does a great job of understanding the feminine and what they need and what they want in a relationship. He makes everything really clear and really easy to understand. And this is another big reason why I left this book for women is because he breaks it down in such a logical, easy to understand way that I realized that through reading this book, I am much better able to clearly articulate and communicate what I need or what I want in my relationship. And this helps me by how I communicate with my partner. It's not always easy to communicate the real deep root cause reason for why you need something or why you desire something in a relationship. And I found that this book really helps me to reframe those thoughts in a more logical and practical way so that it can actually be implemented into our life. I mean, in a relationship with a masculine person, you are going to get a lot better results if you were able to clearly communicate what you need and what you desire. And this book has helped me to do that. So although this book is not meant for a feminine woman, it is still such an interesting read and can provide a lot of value and of course this is a really good book for your partners to read as well my husband's reading it right now this is just a side note a side book just in case if you want to learn more about masculine energy the like premier masculine man book is this book called way of the way of the superior man this is a very popular one um, it's also a very, very interesting read if you want to dig more into masculine energy and understanding that side of it. The next book is The Mountain Is You. And this book is all about self-sabotage and how we sabotage our success or our happiness, not intentionally, but we do it a lot of times as a way to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. And she really dives deep into this topic of self-sabotage and how common it is in our life. So she talks about how we self-sabotage and what ways we we can see this in our life and of course how we can remedy this and how we can move forward without doing this. And I like this book because it's just a really, really easy read. It's a quick read and there are so many good nuggets of wisdom in here. So many things that I underlined and highlighted and I want to find one for you. I like this one. When you have big, ongoing, insurmountable issues in your life, especially when the solution seems so simple, so easy and yet so impossible to stick with, what you have are not big problems but big attachments. And so one of the big things she talks about is how we are guided by comfort and familiarity and that's what feels good to us even when it's not so comfortable at the same time and how as humans we are programmed to survive not really thrive and she talks about how much this plays out in our day-to-day -day life <laughs> through self-sabotage overall this is a fabulous easy read such an important topic everyone should read this. Okay, so this next book, I actually just finished reading it and actually bought it like six months ago and I didn't read it until now for some reason. I felt like I really wasn't gonna enjoy it, but it's a book on, you know, feminine energy and womanhood. So I bought it. I'm like, I should read that based off of the topic that I talk about, right? And I finally read it and I don't know why I waited so long. It's a fabulous book. So I'm not gonna say the title of it because uh, I don't understand YouTube's rules and I don't wanna get demonetized, but this is the book and it's a fat, can you see it? Yeah, fabulous book. Um, this is all about more of the darker feminine. So I have an older video, I'll link it up here about what the dark feminine is. And it's not the wounded feminine, but the dark feminine, the more primal side of the feminine. And that part is just as important as the light, sweet, caring feminine. So in this book, she talks about kind of all of those things, but one of the things, kind of like the root of her message is how important pleasure is to a woman's life and not 
not just she's not just talking about sexually. This is about pleasure in every aspect of a woman's life and how pleasure is what really makes for a radiant woman. She's all about really embracing your pleasure, embracing your emotions, embracing your intuition and your creativity and all those deeper, darker parts that's innately within you as a feminine being. And as you can tell by this title, this book is a little bit, you know, on the raunchier side. And she does talk about the sexual aspects of this as well. So if you are struggling to get more comfortable with your body in that whole area of your life and intimacy, then this book could also be really beneficial for you, but it is on the raunchier side. So keep that in mind. And like with any book, you don't have to agree with the author on everything that they say. I wouldn't say that I agreed with necessarily everything that she said. Said, but when she was, you know, really talking about the main meat, the main message of her book, I absolutely agreed with and resonated with it. She really talks about how powerful we can be as a woman when we embrace our pleasures and our desires. We're not meant to sacrifice our happiness. We're meant to be turned on by life. This is what helps us become our best, most radiant selves. So this next book, I have already mentioned this book in many other past videos, so I'm going to make this one pretty quick. But the book is In the Flow by Alyssa BT. This is all about cycle syncing. You guys know I I love cycle syncing. If you don't know what cycle syncing is, real quick, it's basically just syncing your life to your cycle. And in your cycle, you have four different phases and each phase has different strengths. And when you can kind of match up your life to these strengths, you can really take advantage of these powers and honor these powers. And we can utilize them and life becomes so much easier and so much better. So many women who are wanting to step more into their feminine energy, their femininity, kind of forget the really important part that we also really need to understand our bodies, how we work as women, how our cycles work and all of that kind of stuff. The truth of the matter is, is that as long as we are having a natural cycle, meaning not on birth control pills, then our hormones are changing throughout the month. And so this can affect how much energy we have, how productive we are in certain things, how social we feel and all of these kind of things. It's important to understand how our bodies work and when we can understand this and anticipate those those changes and utilize these strengths, we become so much more powerful as women. I'll link an old cycle syncing video for you guys. If you're interested in the topic, if you enjoy that video, then definitely get this book. She is the expert in this topic. Now, next book, but still on the same topic. Every woman should read this book. This is the Bible for womanhood. The book is called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. It's all about understanding your fertility, taking control of your cycle. If you look at it on Amazon, you can see how many positive reviews there are for this book. And that's because this is stuff that should have been taught to us when we were growing up, when we were becoming young women. Again, being in touch with your feminine is more than just wearing lipstick and dresses. It's about really understanding your body at a deeper level. So the bulk of this book talks about how to either prevent pregnancy naturally or how to achieve pregnancy and how you can best do these things and understand your body. So all of this is within your own control, especially if you are getting off of birth control pills soon, you're thinking about it, or you just recently got off of it, then I a thousand percent recommend this book, then you should absolutely have this in your bookshelf. While this book is huge, I mean, I know it is huge, it's kind of like a textbook, you don't have to read it all. There are certain chapters relating to certain things, so there are some chapters that I haven't even read yet. So don't be intimidated by it because it actually is very easily digestible and easy to read. So this book helps you to feel more in control of your fertility and everything relating to that kind of stuff. And that is incredibly empowering as a woman. Just go read all of the reviews, pretty much all five stars. If I have a daughter one day, she will be reading this book. So the next book is a book called The Power of Now. It is very, very popular for the you know spiritually minded person. And it's for some reason very cheap on Amazon right now, but um, it's kind of written as a dialogue. It's very interesting, but this is, book is all about the power of the present moment. And he talks about how our mind creates a lot of our pain by either being in the past or being too much in the future and we can mitigate a lot of our pain by just simply being in the present so i made a video probably two months ago now about how i romanticize my life and one of the biggest tips for that was having mindfulness and being mindful and present in everything that i do and i really started to understand that topic when i started reading this book and i really started having breakthroughs in my mindfulness when i started reading this book when i read this book i immediately started feeling more joy in my day-to-day -day life and i loved the simplicity of this book but also the depth of this book at the same time and about how all of our happiness and our joy 
really comes from within. So if you're someone who's struggling with anxiety or depression, this might be really helpful for you. Again, the writing style is sometimes a bit of a challenge, but if you are on a spiritual journey, then this is one of those must read books. I feel like this book is to be read slowly and to really take in every single word that he says. This isn't something that you just wanna rush through in two or three days. The next book is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, but essentially how he got into all of this work is he got into a biking accident and he broke his back pretty bad. And they told him that he needs some pretty intensive surgery and might be disabled for the rest of his life. And he decided, no, thank you. I am going to heal this myself with my mind. I'm at least going to try. And he did that <laughs> within like, I think 10 weeks or something like that, he was completely healed. And he basically healed his body with his thoughts alone. So that is what all of his work is about. It's about how much power our thoughts have in our life with our physical body with our achievements this book kind of really talks about manifestation and law of attraction but he breaks it down in a very kind of like more scientific way and in a way that makes it feel really achievable now he obviously is a big proponent of meditation because that is kind of partly how he healed his problems i guess in the past um so he actually sells meditations on his websites and i just recently bought one two weeks ago and i've been doing it every day and i will say I am enjoying it. But besides that, I really enjoyed this book all about really understanding how your thoughts can affect your life. For some reason, Dr. Joe is one of those guys where people either, you know, love him or hate him. So you could search him up on YouTube and find some interviews that he's done. He's done a ton of YouTube and podcast interviews. And if you like what he has to say, then you're gonna really enjoy this book. I mean, our mind is so freaking powerful. And if we can learn to actually harness it, then we can pretty much create whatever we want in our life. So the last book is Woman's Bodies, Woman's Wisdom. So. Clearly, I am a big proponent of women understanding their bodies. I think you guys know that by now. Again, it is very big, but you don't have to read it all. I haven't actually read it all. Basically, she kind of combines the physical and emotional well-being of woman in here. She talks about every aspect of a woman's life. She talks about everything having to do with periods and PCOS and you know motherhood and pregnancy and menopause and she talks about breast cancer and all those types of things like that she talks about the energy centers of a woman's body and she talks about chakras i really like her approach because she kind of combines everything in here she is a traditional md so like a traditional doctor but she also is a huge believer in you know holistic and energetic practices so all of that is combined into here so you can kind of see this as like the bible for women's health and she again talks about how how our emotional thought patterns can create certain disease or problems in our life. She's also a big believer in that. And she's seen this firsthand in her practice where when people change their thought patterns or they change their circumstances in their life, people will heal from diseases without actually changing the physical aspect of it, like the food that you're eating or anything like that. If you want to be a healthy, vibrant woman and live a long time and live a good, happy life, then this book is for you. I encourage you to go look at the table of contents of this book on the Amazon page because you can see it really does just like cover everything and every aspect of a woman's life and woman's health. So this will always be one of my favorite books. That's it. So again, all of these books are linked down below for you guys. Let me know if you're planning on reading any of them. I would love to know or if you've already read any of them and what your thoughts are, but I hope that they help you like they've helped me. All right, I'm just going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.